When a substitute teacher gets hit by a meteor, he finds that he has acquired strange powers that he can use to bring change in the ghetto. The movie opens up in Washington, D.C. in 1993, where Jefferson Reed is woken up by the ringing of his alarm clock and the barking of his dog. Since Jefferson worked as a substitute music teacher at an elementary school nearby, he rushed to leave his apartment on time. On his way down, he notices Mr. Moses, his neighbor playing a new record while he tries on his new wigs. Jefferson greets him before going outside. There he comes across Mrs. Walker, who thanks him for getting her tickets to her favorite show. He tells her that he owed it to her for letting him miss his several times when he couldn't afford it. Just as he reaches the school, the bell rings and he rushes down the hallway to reach his classroom. On his way there, he is interrupted by his friend Michael, who tells him that he is excited for Jefferson's performance later that night. He reaches his classroom, where a young boy named Dre misbehaves with him. He is taken away by his mother, who forces him to apologize to his teacher. Then, Jefferson is told that the school's headmistress, Mrs. Law, is waiting for him in her office and wishes to speak to him. When he walks into the headmistress's office, he notices one of his students sitting there with his parents who is injured from head to toe. Mrs. Law is not happy with his methods of teaching and is about to reprimand him when she is interrupted by the boy's mother. She tells Jefferson that since he had told her son to run away from bullies rather than face them, he is now severely injured. Mrs. Law then tells him to teach his students things from the books and from his life experiences. Jefferson apologizes to both Mrs. Law and the parents before leaving the office. The next day, Jefferson is seen walking across the street with his family when he notices a bunch of thugs bullying a teenager. He suggests that they should walk away, but his father refuses to back down and goes up to the thugs. He calls them out for terrorizing their community. This does not sit well with them, and they are about to hit him when they see a police car drive by. Later that night, Jefferson joins his family at the community center, where everyone tries to come up with a solution for the growing number of crimes in their area. He presents the community with the idea of ringing a bell to notify the police whenever they notice a crime taking place place. However, everyone is opposed to the idea and tells him that they don't want to put their lives at risk in hopes of reducing crime. Once the community meeting ends, Jefferson exits the community center and heads for his car, excited to finally make it to his show. When he gets closer, he notices that someone has broken the car's window and stolen his radio and bass guitar. Before he can inspect for further damage, he hears a woman scream in the distance. He immediately jumps into action and rushes to help the woman. As he gets closer to an alley, he finds two of his students stealing from the woman's purse. He calls them out just as the woman gets up and runs away. This is when members of the Golden Lords gang appear behind them. They stare at Jefferson to intimidate him and succeed when he starts running away from them. As the gang begins chasing after him, he jumps into a nearby trash can and hides there. Just then, he hears the gang's leader telling him men to split up and look around for Jefferson. All of a sudden, Dre lifts up the trash can's lid and finds his teacher hiding inside. However, to his relief, Dre does not say anything and lets him hide in there. Jefferson finds himself sitting inside the trash can until midnight, which is when he decides to get out and head home. On his way there, he spots a strange green light in the sky. He quickly discovers that it is a meteor that is heading towards his direction. He begins running, but it seems as if the meteor is chasing him and eventually catches up with him. The meteor hits him and gets absorbed into his body, causing third-degree burns. Jefferson is taken to the hospital, where he receives treatment for the severe burns on his body. All of the doctors are left in awe as his blood samples show anomalies. They, along with several scientists and nurses, rush to his room and remove his bandages to find that he has no scar tissue. The head doctor thinks that there has been a misdiagnosis due to the lack of scar tissue and begins reprimanding his doctors. When the doctor presents his theory of third-degree burns to everyone's shock, Jefferson tells the doctor that he is wrong and then recites a paragraph from one of their medical book, correcting him. Soon, though, he forgets what he was saying. That night, Jefferson wakes up to find that he can look through walls when he wakes up to the sound of a nurse talking to another patient. Then, as he opens his room's window, he discovers that he can see what people are wearing underneath his clothes. This excites him, and he lays back down in his bed and presses the call button for a nurse that he had found to be extremely good-looking. However, his luck runs out when an older nurse arrives in his room and insists on helping him. A few days later, Jefferson is released from the hospital, and he goes back home. When he arrives at his apartment, he greets his dog who begins barking excitedly at him. This time, he discovers that his newfound abilities allow him to communicate with his dog. This way, he can understand what his dog is saying, and his dog is able to understand what he is saying. Later that day, Jefferson's friend Michael arrives at his apartment to check up on him. Jefferson immediately tells him about his new abilities. His friend refuses to believe him, but when he 
he starts reciting content from all the books that he can find, Michael has no choice but to believe him. This prompts Michael to wonder if anyone else got hit by the same meteor and acquired the same powers. The scene then changes to an old man who has managed to trap a small portion of the meteor and is using it to control things around him. Meanwhile, Jefferson's father, Mr. Reed, is seen walking down the street when someone attacks him and pushes him to the ground. It turns out that the thugs he had interrupted belong to the Golden Lords gang as well. The next morning, Jefferson is called in for a school faculty meeting. One of the teachers complains during the meeting that the students at their school are out of control and there is no way to help them. He suggests that they should get transferred, but Mrs. Law interrupts him and tells him that the children should not get transferred to another school, but rather to Jefferson's class. Hearing his name, he comments that he does not mind taking care of more children and stands to give a speech. In the middle of it, he gets a vision of his students stealing and loses his train of thought. Luckily, he is saved by another teacher who continues where he left off while he goes out to stop his students. That night, Jefferson takes his father home from the hospital in a wheelchair when they are interrupted by several members of the Golden Lord's gang. Before they can touch his father, Jefferson tells them to stay away. This does not sit well with them, and they rush forward to attack him. All of a sudden, his powers get activated, and he uses his superhuman strength to throw the gangsters back. Scared, the rest of the gangsters run off as well. When Jefferson notices that his whole family has witnessed his powers, he confesses that he had acquired powers after he was hit by the meteor. Although he had asked his family to keep it a secret, Word quickly gets out, and he begins to get recognized as a hero. One day, Jefferson wakes up late for work and rushes to get to school. On his way there, a car full of Golden Lords members drives past him. The men inside draw their guns out and start shooting at Jefferson. The bullets don't harm him, and suddenly, Jefferson starts flying, and he latches onto a streetlight as the gangsters drive away. While hanging there, he notices a nearly naked woman and freaks out when she calls him a peeping tom. Due to his movements, the streetlight breaks apart and he falls to the ground, causing a massive earthquake. Everyone is shocked to hear about the earthquake, since it is the first in the history of Washington, D.C. Over the next few days, Jefferson's parents express their excitement over his powers and begin coming up with plans on how they could best utilize his powers. His mother even sews up a costume for him. Just like his parents, his community is excited to brand him as a superhero for driving the gang out of their streets. Meanwhile, Goldilocks and the rest of the gang members report back to their boss and tell him that Jefferson had managed to survive despite getting hit by the bullets. He refuses to believe that a man could survive after getting shot and then flying. He sees this as his men making excuses for their failure and threatens to get rid of them if they don't kill Jefferson. On the other hand, Jefferson finally decides on a new costume and spends his nights rescuing people in distress and dealing with criminals. He even manages to fix the community's relationship with the police department. Soon enough, the meteor man becomes famous and everyone begins to wonder what the limit of his abilities is. With his rise in popularity, the criminal syndicate is not happy because the Meteor Man has managed to take down their drug rings and has caused them huge losses. One man named Mr. Byers even offers a million dollars to anyone who can bring the Meteor Man to him. Not concerned with the danger he is putting himself in, Jefferson makes his way to an abandoned parking lot. Overnight, he clears the area out and plants flowers in the area. The next morning, as the town wakes up, they are surprised to find a garden in the middle of their ghetto. One day, while he is busy working, Jefferson gets surrounded by the Golden Lords gang, and they accuse him of being the Meteor Man. He tries to tell them that it is not him, but they refuse to believe him. Just then, Michael walks into the classroom, makes up a lie, and announces that the Meteor Man has just finished getting rid of more criminals. At night, as Jefferson sleeps, someone sneaks into his room and steals his costume. When he realizes that his costume is missing, he rushes to find the person responsible because he knows that the men from Golden Lords have probably surrounded him. Sure enough, as he gets to the location, he notices the fake Meteor Man, who turns out to be Michael, surrounded by gangsters who are preparing their guns to kill him. The fake Meteor Man soon realizes that he is being followed and tries to escape. However, he finds a Golden Lords member in every corner and finds himself trapped with no way out. With no other choice left, Jefferson uses his powers from a distance and makes the fake Meteor Man fly using his fingers. Unfortunately for him, he is not as discreet as he wanted, and the Golden Lords leader manages to figure out who the real Meteor Man is. That evening, when Jefferson returns to the community center, everyone surprises him with a party to celebrate him and his heroic acts. In the middle of the party, they hear a commotion outside and decide to check it out. As soon as they get out, Jefferson notices members of the Golden Lords 
waiting for him, and they start shooting at him. Jefferson uses his powers to dodge all the bullets and protect the people behind him. By the time they stop shooting and leave, Jefferson finds that his hands are bleeding and that he might be losing his powers. The next morning, the criminal syndicate's leader, Mr. Byers, manages to find Jefferson's apartment and reaches there, intending to kill the Meteor Man, since the Golden Lords had reported that he is losing his powers. Inside his apartment, Jefferson's dog tries to wake him up, but when he does not wake up, his dog drags him away and hides him underneath a pile of dirty clothes. Sometime later, his father and Michael arrive at his apartment and wake him up. They theorize that he sleeps to recharge his powers, which is why he was unable to wake up earlier. When he goes out that day, he discovers that the community no longer sees him as a hero, but rather as a threat. They blame him for risking their safety and ask him to leave so that peace can be restored. Jefferson agrees to honor their wishes and goes back home to pack. All of a sudden, he hears a loud noise outside and decides to check it out. He finds that the Golden Lord's leader, Simon, is back again, and he wants to take down the Meteor Man once and for all. The two of them begin fighting as everyone watches them. As Jefferson begins to lose his powers once again, a meteor lands near them. Both of the men jump to reach for it and end up touching it at the same time. Both of them acquire the same powers and continue fighting until their powers begin to end. At that moment, Jefferson touches a martial arts book and begins using similar techniques to fight Simon. He manages to defeat the gang leader after a long fight. The movie ends with Jefferson continuing to use his powers to help bring positive change in his community, while everyone in the ghetto continues to support him. And with that, the movie ends. I hope you enjoyed our video. Watch the next recaps on the screen and don't forget to subscribe for amazing videos. See you in the next one.